Hey guys, I'm Chris. Today I'm going to show you how I create a high resolution time lapse using Adobe Camera Raw and Premiere Pro. Now there's a million ways to go about doing this. I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm just saying that this is the way I found that I have the best luck with. So today's cameras, that include cell phones, have a lot of automatic time lapse modes that will produce decent results but I find that I get better results when I use full resolution images for my time lapse instead of just an automated video file. Now, you can certainly use Lightroom for this process. I prefer Adobe Bridge because I don't really like Lightroom. I think it's kind of slow and typically I'm just searching for one image from a set that I want to edit. So it's never really fit my workflow. So the reason why I prefer to use this method is because I like to have the ability to make my edits to the raw images instead of some movie file full of JPEGs. As everyone knows, you're going to be able to pull a lot more detail out of the raw image than a JPEG. And for some people, this might seem like overkill and fair enough, I can't really argue with that. But like I said, I like to know that I'm starting with the best that I possibly can. So. Let's just get into this and I'll show you how easy it really is. Okay, so if you're a member of Creative Cloud, you have access to Bridge, which is basically just a really convenient way to organize all of your content. So as you can see, here is the time-lapse I actually did today for specifically this tutorial. Um, it's nothing special. I just went out and grabbed this really quick. I did three second intervals for 15 minutes. And I mean, it's not the best, but what do you do? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to push Control A to select all of them, right click, and then do Open in Camera Raw. And this will enable you to um, edit this one image however you want. So we're gonna just kind of like bump up the contrast a little bit. Um, yeah, maybe some clarity. Okay, and for like the sake of this, I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come over here to the left and push Control A to select all of them. And we're going to right click and hit Sync Settings. So what this will do is change every image to the one that you edited, which is pretty nice. So now what we're gonna do is come down here to Save Images. Now we're going to... <laughs> Oh man, folder, it's gonna call JPEGs. All right, so we're gonna save it in there. We want it to be in a JPEG format. We want maximum quality, so 12. All right, now we're gonna hit save. And now we just wait, 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 wait. All right, so our images are finally done saving. Let's go down here and click done. All right, now we're gonna open up Premiere Pro. We're going to create a new project. Let's call it time-lapse because we're very original over here. Yes. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to File. We're gonna go to New, down to Sequence. And we're going to use the RE Cinema presets because it has everything we want already in regards to frame size and frame rate. So 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 24 frames per second. So I'll click OK. And we're gonna come back down here to the project, double click in this box, and we're gonna click on the first image. And that's all we have to do. Make sure this box down here where it says image sequence is checked, and we're gonna click open. Now what that's gonna do is take all 290 some images and condense them all down into one sequence so we don't have to do it. All right, let's drag this over here. We wanna keep existing settings. Now, the first thing I notice is this time-lapse is like 12 seconds long. And for me, that's really long for any time-lapse. I mean, even, <laughs> especially this one because it's not that interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this and we're just gonna speed it up a little bit. So let's right click, go to speed duration, and let's go to 200%. And that'll give us, let's see, six seconds instead of 12 seconds. So that really helps. All right, so we're working with a project size that's 1920 by 1080, and our image sizes are actually 6240 by 4160, and that's a little over 6K. 
What that means is that gives us a ton of room to play with. So if we come up here to scale, we can move this down and see just how much room we have. So we can go down to like 31% up here. But for right now, let's go back to 100. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like before we do anything with it. All right, so that's what it looks like right now, as is. So, I mean, we have movement, we have trees moving, clouds moving, whatever. It's still kind of cool, but I think we can do a little better. What we're gonna do is we're going to hit home to get to the very beginning of this sequence. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and click the stopwatch to toggle the keyframes. And so it's gonna start out at 100%. Now let's click on end to go to the very end of our sequence. And here I wanna make it so it goes to 50. All right, what this is going to do is over the course of six seconds is it's gonna slowly zoom out. And so let's just take a look and see what that looks like. And this is what our time lapse looks like with a little movement. So now because we have such a big resolution size on these images, we have all of this room to digitally zoom or pan. And that's what we did here is we zoomed out digitally and it just gave us movement in our time lapse, which I think looks a lot better than just a static time lapse. Now, more importantly, being able to edit raw images is also super convenient with doing it this way. And I mean, I like it better and this is how I do it. Again, this is not how you should have to do it or should do it. I'm just telling you how I do my time lapses. So I hope this helped you guys or gave you another perspective on how to do things. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I guess. <laughs> and you know what to do. Please like, subscribe, hang out with me again. Until next time, I'm Chris. See ya!